Hello again. Been a while since I've put on a YouTube video and was working on a new project that some people might be interested in. So basically what I've done, created a DOS-like operating system for the for an RP2040. Now to start my operating system, you simply type in import pydos. Now you see I get something similar to an old Microsoft DOS prompt. And um, what you can do is you just type in directory and you get a, a directory of what's in the file system. You can do dirw, get a wide one. I can do dir slash p, and it'll pause on the screen full. Um, so that's there. I can do type x.txt. Um, if there, there are subdirectories here, let's do dirw. So I've got a pybasic subdirectory, so I can go down to that. See, there's sub the files in here. PyBasic is a basic interpreter, which I'll have a link in the description below of the GitHub source. Uh, but I've tweaked it to uh, run on MicroPython. The one that was out on GitHub was for CPython. And uh, I've made a couple other minor uh, tweaks to it to support the types of basic programs I was looking for. Well, let's start it up. So if I type in PyBasic, <clears throat> that'll start up the basic program, and then I can load. Let's just load test.base. Now I can list it. Now the, the version of this on GitHub didn't have any uh, control over the list. You could only list the entire file. So I added a, so you can add a list to 110. And I think I might have, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, list 100 to 1,000. Yeah, so you can list, I wonder if comma works. Yes, it does, okay. So you can uh, list a range of lines, or you can list a single line. So that was a, a tweak that I added to it. The other made tweak was when I was downloading, looking for basic programs to test on, a lot of them um, had the um, had the ability to do, if I want to do 10 for i equals 1 to 10, colon, print i, colon, next. So stringing multiple line, multiple commands on a single line. 10 for i equals 1 to 10, 20, print i, colon, next, list, 20, print i, colon, next, run. There you go. So uh, a lot of them had strung multiple commands uh, on a single line with the colons um, separating the commands. You can't do it on every type of command. So, for instance, apparently on the for, com for loops, you can't uh, add a uh, second line to it. Let's just double check that to make sure. For i equals 1 to 10, colon, print i, and then 20. Put the next there. List it. That looks fine. Run it. Yeah. It, the, uh, a for command just can't handle the colon. So. So there are some, and th there are certain commands that it works on, and certain that it doesn't. But if you're downloading a basic command and it's got a lot of lines strung together, um, it's convenient that you don't have to edit out all of them uh, to make the, the basic program work. So that's the sort of changes to that. Um, exit that. That brings me back to here. Um, so I can do things like pi basic, and then is there a hello? I don't don't have a hello world. Interesting. But I can do a test.base, and then it'll load that from the command line and run it um, then it actually uh, leaves me in basic so I can exit out of basic um, the other things you might have noticed I was launching the pi basic program by just typing it so that is something that you can do with any Python program so for instance let's see what's in test.py um, uh, that one looks a little bit more complicated than I want let's see check out another one it's probably hello.py let's see what hello.py does so that looks like it just prints hello, y, hello world. So I can type in hello, and it'll execute the, pipe, the Python program. So the other couple, let's see, I can make directory temp, let's create subdirectories, and then there, copy. If I want to copy all the Py programs down to temp. Mm. Okay. This is one of the issues that I'm running into with running an operating system on the microcontroller, is that uh, memory management is tough. I've tried to do a little bit with it. That's why I added the... Um, in parentheses before the prompt, the amount of free memory. Uh, but I don't know if there's a leak or if it just um, has issues from time to time. But Control D will do a soft reboot on the 
the microcontroller, and I've got the, the main.py set up, which uh, just starts up the operating system for me. So temp should still be there. It is. It actually started to copy a file. So let's delete that. Okay. Now let's try copying everything again. Copy star.py down to temp. Okay. It's going to copy this time. So a couple things this demonstrates is wildcard copies and um, the subpathing. And so I can copy things. So if I were, wanted to go down to temp and I can say copy go upper directory go down to tiny basic go down to test one go down to test two let's go back up and we'll copy everything from there to wherever I am and so found the file there so you can use the dots you can use the dot dots I can do a copy copy um, slash tiny basic slash star dot base if I want to go that to the current directory I spell copyright. That'll copy. Um, so it, the subdirectory navigation and wildcards works pretty well. A couple things I haven't completed are the, the rename command. Um, I haven't expanded to deal with wildcards or the subdirectory. So you kind of have to be in the current subdirectory. You can do a little bit in subdirectory uses, but it's not fully robust. Um, so basically, if you're going to rename, you want to be in the directory that you're in. At some point, I'll probably um, straighten that out, but for the moment, uh, it gets a little confused sometimes if you try and rename directories from other uh, from an other location. Uh, the delete uh, found that that was pretty useful to have wildcards, especially when I'm testing like this. So obviously, I can delete all that. Move a directory. Uh, temp. There we go. So, and then the edit command. This is basically um, is heavily inspired by DOS Edline. So for, for all you old times out here that remembered how to use that, otherwise it's a help command. And basically you can, um, uh, so let's open case.txt. Now if I list it, uh, that's a uh, one to 10 list. So those are the first, well, actually zero to nine list. So those are the first 10 lines of the file. Um, if you want to delete the line, you do, you basically, the, the way the commands work are, you put the line number or range of line numbers in front of the commands you want. So if I wanted to delete a line, delete 10, line number 9, for instance, I'd just do 9, delete, and then 9, scan. If I wanted to change a command, so let, or let's list line 7, so I'll do 7 list. <clears throat> if I want to edit line 7, I can e either hit 7, and then it'll show me the current value, and then I can type what I want it to be. So if I want to say this is the new code appended line. Now if I do a seven list, that's this is the new third. Well, I spelled third long. It's the third appended line. Let's say I wanted to change that. I can do seven replace quote T-I-R-D comma quote T-H-I-R-D quote. And now if I do a seven list, you see that that has been changed. Now I can do that <clears throat> with global changes. So I can do like... Um, uh, well, let's see. Let's do a three comma six lit three comma six list, and so you see those are those three lines. Now let's say everywhere in lines three to six, I want to replace a p with an x. Now if I do a three comma six list, all the x, all the p's have been changed to x's, and then I can, obviously I can change that back three comma six replace. X with P's. Now three comma six list. Yeah. So and then uh, quit <coughs> Q quits without saving. E saves and quits and W will write out just the file without leaving. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit, not save any of those changes. <coughs> so that's a, a line editor. Um, and, and the Pi basic and then well, I, this is just a something I found handy, so I went ahead and created this, so file view, and then the file we were just editing was test.txt. File view, test.txt. So then <clears throat> it basically view, it displays the first 24 lines of the file, um, but then you can use the down arrow to scroll down or the up arrow to scroll up. So if you, it's a, well, for instance, for a more complicated file, I could take a look at PyDOS itself. 
help if I did the whole command file to view. And so they are the first few lines of it. And I can scroll down. I can hold the down arrow, scroll down, scroll back up. So just a useful little program. Um, <clears throat> and then, so this, all this runs on it, just about any basic uh, RP24. I, I started with the one from Raspberry itself, the Pico. That's what I started writing it on. And then I've ordered the, I went ahead and ordered the one from Adafruit, uh, the Feather, RP2040 Feather, because that had a more interesting LED on it. Um, and so I played around with that. And then I got the SparkFun Things Plus, and the thing that's uh, really exciting me about that was it had an SD card on it. So um, I have an SD mount card, which will command, which I'll type out here just so you see what's involved. It basically uh, uses the SD card uh, library. So now if I type SD mount, it blows up. What's the call here? Oh, I don't think the <laughs> I'd taken the card out to uh, transfer some files. So let me pull it off the PC. So I'll reboot that. So there's that. And then we'll go ahead and run the SD mount card. And now you see SD is mounted. So I can go down to SD. And sure enough, this is basically what I've just been using to transfer files back and forth. Now I can transfer them when I, right now I've got the um, the SmartThing Plus connected to my Raspberry Pi running Linux on it. And so I can actually transfer files from the Linux machine over to the uh, to the to the microcontroller fairly easily. But I really wanted to this thing to be a standalone environment. So I went out and I bought a little ter terminal board which plugs a VGA board plugs into it and a PS2 keyboard plugs into it and it, um, it's got some TTL serial lines which I can connect directly to the Pico and so basically I can have the Pico running as a as a standalone computer with just a keyboard and a monitor connected to it and then if I when I'm running in that mode I use the SD card kind of like an old style floppy disk I'll copy files to the SD card and you can mm -hmm. pop it out while it's running I, I typically do an SD unmount just to make sure you know, that there's no corruptions. Um, SD mount, that'll, that'll take it off. So now SD won't be there. Um, <clears throat> I, I typically do that first, but then I'll pop, I don't have to power down the microcontroller and I'll just pop that out and put it on the PC and move the files back and forth. The date and the time. Um, since it's connected to, when I've got it running, when I've got it running uh, connected to a, ras to a uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, it actually picks up the date when I, when I connect to it. So the date and time is set to the operating system date and time, uh, which is convenient. But when I have it running standalone as a, uh, with just the keyboard and the, and the monitor connected to it, then it doesn't, it, it, it defaults to January 1st, 2021. So if I don't set the date um, and time, the, uh, it, it goes to January 1st. So there's a set date command here, which will let me set it. Let's try setting it to tomorrow, just to make sure that it actually does something, 2021. Invalid year, I guess. 20, 21 to 31. Oh, they only want a two-digit year. It doesn't know about Y2K, huh? <laughs> 5, 30, 21. So there you go. Now the date's 5, 30, 21. And then if I want to set it back to the correct date, I can actually, I think, on this version, do you know, on the command line. Let's make sure that that works. Uh, so let's spell it right. 5, 29, 21. There you go. Now the date's back to what it's supposed to be. Same thing for time. Uh, that's the current time, uh, and there's a set time command. I think if I just hit return, it doesn't do anything. So now I, I did put all of this software out on GitHub. I mean, I, as I said, there are some things I still want to do to it, um, but I'll put a link in the description below to the GitHub repository for the. Uh, for all the Python and the basic code that uh, was demonstrated here. So, hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.